Hello friends, my name is James. And this is my 1965 Alberg 30 Sloop Tritea. We are on a mission to sail around the world and see as much of this beautiful planet as possible. We are currently working our way through the South Pacific and I can't wait to show you everything we see. Good morning friends. It is time to haul up here at Kia Ora Anchorage on Rangiroa and um, we're going to make way for a very secluded anchorage called uh, Motu Fama or Fama Motu. It is on the southwestern side of the atoll of Rangiroa. Um, Rangiroa is the second largest atoll in the world. It's so big that you can't see the land or motus across the water. Um, our passage today is like 17 miles and we're gonna be sailing directly across the uncharted lagoon. Uh, I've found accounts the, of people that have made the passage direct to this motu and um, they said there were no obstructions. I'll still be keeping an eye out for coral bombies, but everything should be chill. We have a little bit of breeze We'll see, we'll probably be motor sailing just so we make sure we get there before dark. One of the reasons I'm heading over to Motufama is because the winds are planned to increase to 20 knots uh, southeasterly. And this anchorage has good protection, but I would get trapped here and not be able to explore any more Rangiroa. And I need to be leaving this atoll in like a week's time. So I'm gonna take advantage of the calm day today Get over there that anchorage has good protection from southeast winds and it's supposed to be fantastic so it is time to haul up and make way wow there's a booby bird checking them out we are motor sailing across the lagoon it's interesting, there's like maybe 10 knots of wind. I tried to just sail, I killed the engine. We're only sailing like two and a half knots. I wanna get over to this anchorage and get settled. Um, but look how much fetch there is just from 10 knots of wind. Like when that 20 knot wind show up, I wonder the waves will be pretty decent in here, which there's no swell. It's nothing compared to ocean sailing, but it is interesting how much fetch there is just from 10 knots of wind. We're 11 miles from the anchorage, and I can already see the Motus on the other side of the lagoon. That's what's fascinating about this. Lagoon is so big that you can't see land on the other side. So when I first left, it just felt like I was sailing into the sea, but a giant, like an ocean minus the ocean swells. So it's like a massive lake, probably similar to what it feels like on the Great Lakes when there's not storms happening but uh, very, very wild. Main thing you gotta watch out for, I'm not concerned about coral bombies so much. Um, I am trying to keep a visual on everything, but there's also pearl farms and they're not really marked. So they'll just be a series of floats. And um, so that's something we gotta keep an eye out for. But we should be into the anchorage in like three hours and um, get the hook set. So now it's time to get back on buoy watch.
scary. Glad I was on watch. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Boy, that'll get your blood pumping. That coral reef was like maybe two feet below the water. I saw the turtle, which is rare. Turtles are kind of rare here. I saw a turtle before, I saw the turtle before I saw the water color change. And I'm a little shocked with this fetch that it didn't, the water wasn't disturbed in a specific way, which is scary and very telling. But it's a good lesson to learn. You can't just think that you'll see disturbed water. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, we are about a mile from the anchorage. That other boat that came here, I think they, I think I said their name is Sugar Shack. They anchored right between these Motu Fama and whatever that Motu is called. There's like a pass. They anchored right there and said there was really good sand. We're gonna drive over and look at that and kind of scope out that zone and see what the seafloor looks like. Find a spot that's mostly sand and as little coral bombies as possible. Um, we will be, I have two floats so I can float the chain. When you hear the two motus, a lot of times you have to float your chain so that it doesn't get wrapped around coral bombies. So, I don't, but I only have two floats and it'd be better if I had like four to six. Um, I could use fenders, but fenders compress when they go underwater. So when the wind blows and it pulls your chain, it makes it sink. The fenders compress and they're pointless. So. The I have rigid called buoy, pearl buoys is the best thing to use. I have two of them. So we will definitely be floating our chain, but we would like to find as clear of an area as possible. And um, yeah, that's what's up. We're gonna head for that spot right there. So the visibility was too poor to see the anchor itself, but there's no obstructions. There's no big bombies or anything that we're gonna have to worry about. And I floated the chain, so. Now we just chill out, make some lunch, and sit anchor watch. Okay, we got anchor watch done. Let's go for a dinghy ride and see if we can find a place to land on one of the motus.
Hell yeah. That was easy. Totally clear. It's all sand. There's like an opening. No problem. My first ever uninhabited Motu. Let's go have a look around. There's this crazy beautiful, I think they're called a size is what Kimberly taught me. It's like the inside of an urchin or something, but it, it, it's got that, looks like a sand dollar on that side. Look at that thing now. How beautiful is that? I don't know what it belongs to, but it is very, very beautiful. That is neat. Oh. Maybe it's that. Crazy. It's got spikes on it. I don't want to touch it. it. Must be one of those dudes. Crazy. Let's walk out here to the ocean and see what there is to see. That is so crazy looking. There's like a ton of them over here. Look at that guy. This would be a shell collector's paradise. No one ever, you know, this is uninhabited Motu that probably no one ever comes to. And the people that do come here probably aren't, aren't interested in picking up shells. So many cool shells though. Standing in this field of like shattered coral, broken coral everywhere. It's making like Rice crispy treats. I mean, Rice crispy cereal sounds. You can see through to the other Motus. these crazy lava formations that have been worn down eroded over time this is one of the reasons i wanted to come here These sh the shapes of these rocks is totally bananas. They're also insanely sharp, like razor, razor sharp. Really, really neat to see. The ocean is raging against the outer reef, coming in hard. That's a scary thing for a sailor to see. You get a, in the grasp of one of those waves with that reef and your boat is done for. So cool. Makes me very happy. Picked up some drinking coconuts. Got a little one. Oh, I lost one. Oh, here's my little one. Little bitty one. You can hear them. So I, I picked up a number of little shells and then I thought better of it when I got to the boat just now, to the dinghy, and pulled them out of my pocket and looked, and four of them had guys in them. 
That big guy is he's getting out of here. He's been in my pocket. He's been in my pocket for like half an hour. Cool shell though. Look at him, he's pretty cool, huh? These guys are high-telling it. Very, very. That's the first time I ever had that problem. <laughs> If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching, fair winds until next time.